Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Last time we talked about the Ampere Maxwell law. Uh, that we said, okay, there is a magnetic field and, and this magnetic field, there is then uh, the Durchflutung, the, I call it flush in English because there is not really an English term, because usually in English we are talking about the magnetomotive force. Uh, so there is a magnetomotive force generated and this magnetomotive force is somehow the representation. This is, this is, uh, we can think about that this is, uh, there is a, a, a magnetic field strength called it H and as I said, um, well, it's the magnetic field strength in this direction we are interested in. Uh, and I said, okay, if we are just following the field lines, then we don't really care. Then H and, and the, the, the magnetic field strength and the magnetomotive force are in the same direction. We just can divide and multiply and so on. So we have to think about how a magnetic field is looking like. Right. So let's do this. Uh, let's say here we have a wire. Inside this wire, we have a certain current, and now, now I try to draw this like a three-dimensional. I am looking at a circle around this wire. So here is the circle. And the wire is popping out the middle of this circle. Uh, this circle, let's say, we have the radius R1. Alright? So, let's think about this, this circle is already a field line. Okay? It is already a field line because it's symmetrical around, it's symmetrical around a, a wire. Alright? So, if there is a circle, it's already a field line. This has an orientation. Let's see how is this, is this positive or negative? The going down, so we're punching from below to up. So yes, this this is passing in positive direction. So this I is counting positive. So what is now our Durchflutung? Durchflutung. One. Uh, of this first circle equals i. Uh, right. And this is already, yeah, since we are following, it, it is somehow, uh, this is already, there is no, there is no changing electric field there, let's say, we have electrostatic, so this is already V1, okay? The magnetomotive force at this circle equals just I. Hmm? The Durchflutung of this circle. And now, we are having a look at this, at a segment here. Yeah, here's a little segment of the circle, so here. Yeah? We are looking at at this little part, okay, at this little part, we want to know the, the, the field strength, all right? So let's, let's have a look from here, that's my wire, okay? And I'm looking from, from the bottom now, yeah, this means my current in my wire is going inside, so I see those cross, uh, so it's going duk, duk, duk inside here. And here we have our R1. Uh -huh. Our circle around, should be a circle. Here we have this R1. Uh -huh. And I said, the magnetic field strength, if we are following a field line, and that's a field line, then it is exactly um, everywhere the same yeah? and just divided by the length of the field line. So what is the field line? Yeah? What is the field line length? L. 
Hmm? What is the parameter of a of a circumference of, of, a, of a circle? d pi, so 2 r1 pi. Huh? That's a little one. Okay. So what is h1 now? Magnetic field strength. It's V1 divided by L1. And it goes into this direction because this V has this direction. So if we look from the bottom, this H is circling like this. Let's have a look what is happening if we are choosing a bigger circle. So here, here is now a bigger circle around this. This bigger circle has a radius R2. We are also looking at the segment. And this segment is getting bigger here. This is getting bigger. So what is the... What is... The Durchflutung, the flush, the electric flush of, of the second one, it's exactly the same. This means also the magnetomotive force is exactly the same. What is, here we have R2, L2 equals 2 R2 pi. Here we have a change. Here, here we have a change. All right? So H2 equals V2 divided by L2. And now let's bring this in. Huh? So we have here I. divided by 2 pi r1 and here we have i divided to 2 pi r2 hmm. and our field is going in this direction That's the field, and of course, we can also draw in the potential lines again. And it's exactly looking like we had it in the electric way. That's, that's the field. Huh? And H1, here we have the field strength H1, H2. H H2 is this, and here we have the field strength H1. So here we have H1, here we have H2. So it means double the radius, half of the field. Triple the radius, third of the field. Four times the radius, quarter of the field. And it's like a right Right helix, uh, right hand helix again, whoop, whoop, whoop. go and turning right, go in this direction. And how, how would a field look like if we don't have one current path, we have more current path, uh, we have more wires. Let's say we have here a wire, 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 and what we have here, we have here a wire, and we have here a wire, <laughs> so we have a lot of wires next to each other. Yeah? And let's say all of our wires are, are carrying the same current, so the, and it should all go inside, that we all have it inside again. Let's grab one out, yeah? here. Let's have a look at this point. Let's have a look at this point. At this point, 
this current is producing an edge in this direction. Right-handed. This current is producing an edge in this direction. And if I summarize to store two edges, we are going in this direction. The edge of this is also going in this direction. And always, there is always a counterpart. So we end up in a situation where this is the field line. Okay? But also right-handed. Yeah? And below we have it exactly the other way. So if we are equidistant, yeah? or going into extremes and next to each other, very close to each other, one after the other, yeah? then we end up that our magnetic field is here flat. Yeah? Flat. Yeah, flat. If this is a plate yeah? and, the, and the current is distributed over this plate, then we have a flat, uh, flat field. Yeah? This is called superposition. Of more currents. Mm -hmm. Superposition of more currents. Uh, okay, that this is the shape, the shape of the of the magnetic field. All right. Uh, I want to make an example. I want to make an example. I have prepared something here. Uh, we said we have a right hand helix, right? So let's say this is our this is our current. Uh, here we have the current, and I can say our current is rushing inside here. Uh, and we have here a wire. This is the wire. And I say we have a radius R0. And let's make an example. Let's say it's one millimeter. So this whole thing has two millimeter diameters. And let's also say there is a current I. And this current should be 10 amps. Why not? Two millimeters, 10 amps. No issue there. Yeah. And we want to have a look at our magnetic field. Yeah. Let's draw this here. And right-handed, so our magnetic field is going in this direction. This is why I'm going to draw this here down. Yeah. So let's face here the radius, radiuses in equidistance. In our scale here, this would be millimeters. All right. And here. Here. Where I'm going to draw H. The magnetic field. Strength, huh? and let's also draw the magnetomotive force. Let's think about. Let's start here. Huh? Let's start here. And let's only look at the outside of this. Yeah. So our first, our first circle would be that exactly that. Just a little bit outside. So how much, how much flush, how much magnetomotive force I have at this circle? One, uh, 10 amps are passing by. So our magnetomotive force here, here is 10 amps. Here. How much do we have here at this circle? It's again 10 amps. How much do we have here at this circle? Again 10 amps. So it will remain constant over here. Yeah. 
the magnetomotive force will remain constant at 10 amps uh, here with the radius R. Mm -hmm. Good! Huh? And let's calculate now H. Let's calculate H. So what H so equals I'll write it H from R equals V from R divided by two PR. So let's calculate it for this in this situation. Uh, we are uh, uh, working. So we have 10 amps divided by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by r is 1 millimeter 0 0.001 SI units, meters. All right. So we have 10 meters and this equals 1591. I say it's here. One thousand five hundred ninety one. One thousand five hundred ninety one ampere by meter. Hmm? Ampere by meter. At two R I only have half. Of course. Huh? It must be half. Seven hundred ninety five. So at half, I'm here, at 2R, I'm here. Here we have 795 amp by meter. Okay, dropping really quick. Let's say at 3R. What do we have at 3R? 530. 530, and it's only a third. Five hundred thirty amp by meter, and here we only have a quarter, so we should be here. No, here. Huh? Huh? Here? Sorry, this is wrong. <laughs> Divided by four. Four millimeters. 398 Somewhere here, this is a sixth, so one, two, three, four, five, six should be here. It's calculated for six R six two hundred sixty-five. This is how this field looks like. Someone liked it. Here we are really flattening out. Use the big pen. And of course, we're going in this direction. Eh? So we have a field in this direction always. I can cover now my mistake. <laughs> going down. Looking nice, right? So this is what we have outside. How would it look like here? Well, exactly the same. Let's draw it. We are here. Yeah. And we are dropping here to half. 
should be here somewhere. Here we have here, see here. Here we're here. So here at this side we are like a mirror. Uh, because it's it's turned around. Yeah. So here at this side we are going up. It's exactly the same. Because it's actually it's rotary. Huh? Now let's think. How is this inside? How is this inside? Yeah. Let's say we have here. The radius is now internal. And we say our current is e evenly distributed. It's evenly distributed huh? or among the, the, the radius inside. inside. Huh? That's true even for, for uh, direct current. We have direct current here for alternating current. It depends a little bit on the frequency. But let's say it's evenly distributed. So on every square meter, square millimeter, we have the same amount of current. So we only have to take into account this little area uh, compared to the full area. Uh, so what is the area of a square? The area of a, of a square, of a circle, of course. The area of a, a circle is d squared pi, which is r squared pi quarter. Mm -hmm. That's R from A from R. Mm -hmm. And our V from R, uh, in this case, lower, uh, equals I from R. And this equals 10 amps multiplied by A from R divided by a0 the area of the of the hole so this is 10 amps multiplied by r squared pi divided by 4 and r0 is r0 squared pi divided by 4, and I put this immediately up. Huh? Could you follow? <laughs> this, we will write it here. Uh, so this is 10 amps multiplied. Is r squared pi quarter divided by r zero squared pi quarter. And now it's just a double fraction, and I just put this away. Huh? Now we can get rid of some some stuff. Whoopee. Whoopee, whoopee, whoopee. Gone. Huh? So we have this equals ten A, ten Ms R squared divided by R zero squared. This is V from R. And here nothing has changed, right? Here nothing has changed. This is still true. So our H from R equals V from R divided by 2 pi R. 2 pi R. And this is 10 amps multiplied by r squared divided by r zero squared divided by 2 pi r and now let's get again this double fraction let's get rid of this double fraction so i write it 10 amps multiplied by r squared divided by 2 pi r multiplied by r zero squared 
So, and now let's get rid of an 1R. We can get rid of 1R. So this is 10 amps multiplied by R divided by 2 pi R0 squared. It's a linear relation between the radius and the field strength. Yeah? Because, I mean, 10 amps, constant, 2 pi, constant, R0, constant, R0 squared, constant. The only thing which is changing is this, and this is a linear growth. So actually, we have here a linear Grow of the field strength. Hmm? Linear grow of the field strength. Here as well. This is how this is looking. All right. What with the with the magneto uh, magnetomotive force? Well, this is this is going with squared r squared, so it will look like that somehow. Parabola. I don't want to calculate this. It already took long, right? But I hope it, it, you benefited from, there was a benefit from this example. I really hope so. Uh, yeah, this is how, and we see magnetic field is really tough and then it's really going away very fast. Okay. Really, really fast. If this is correct here, who knows? Yeah. Because actually, we have, we have a field strength, all right? We have on one side, we have the magnetic field strength. On the other side, we have the flux density. Yeah. It's somehow those two things must be bound together because we had this in electrical case also. Yeah? We had a field, electrical field strength, and we had electrical flux density, and in between we had a relationship. Yeah? This uh, we will explore next time. Yeah? Next video we are talking about how to combine those two things now, this magnetic induction, magnetic uh, flux density, and the magnetic field strength, yeah? our age. How? Uh, next video for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.